it's a pleasure to be here with you today and to have the honor to moderate this uh, panel with such uh, high-level speakers. We are talking about uh, new technology that is likely to change rapidly and deeply the landscape of our sector like anything else before. We have already had a lot of uh, introductions, so I'll make it a shortcut to start directly with our moderators and try to understand what is the impact that we can uh, foresee and expect in the patient care uh, outcome, but also in the changing and transformative outcomes that are expected with the introduction of uh, AI technology in our, in our industry. We had already had the chance to listen to his Highness, His Excellency Mubarak and Mubarak Ibrahim previously in the, in the beginning of our, our sessions today. But I would like to uh, place a new question, which is uh, how is AI transforming patient care in the UAE? And what are the key milestones you have achieved in targeting AI into personalized care health solutions? Also, I would like you to elaborate a bit more about the relationship in between the public sector and the private sector, not only on the regulatory frame, but also something you mentioned before in your previous speech, which is the transformative role of AI into the leadership of uh, all the players in this sector. What is expected to happen and what we need them to do from now on? First of all, uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for hosting me into this amazing summit with all these uh, healthcare leaders. I really appreciate it. Now, how we can transform, you know, the patient care in the UAE or also, you know, be part of the, you know, the transformation that happens at the level of the world. One thing that I want to start with is that when we have implemented the AI, it's really uh, affected profoundly the golden triangle, which is the cost, the, uh, the cost, the access, and the quality of the uh, care provision. So going forward, you know, the research has showed that only 30, $320 billion, okay, will be the projection of the, uh, you know, the economy, you know, how much is the AI will be adding to the economy to the MENA area which is, means that the AI is something that we need to adopt to. Now, going forward is that what we have done in the United Arab Emirates, and I'm really very proud of, is that our strategy, which is the AI strategy that has been published 2031, it has main pillars. And the main pillars have education and have healthcare and have transportation. And healthcare was the second pillar in that one. And the focus was around, which is, I think, something that we all should be focusing, was around the workforce readiness and was around also the uh, integrating the AI into the medical services. And the third one was around the responsible AI. Given the fact that there ha has been a huge implementation at the level of United Arab Emirates for the AI, especially when you talk about the integrating with the services, the market for the telemedicine has reached around $425 million in the growth in the economy. And also, um, and above that, we have in the EHS, I'm just gonna give you examples of what you've done. We've actually implemented the virtual care. We have around 40,000 you know, visit that comes in a yearly basis, in, in a monthly basis, utilizing the virtual care. So there is a really a prominent effect on the AI. Now, what we should be doing as leaders, as you stated, is that there should be a collaboration at the level of the private and the government. Why? Because, you know, when you talk about any adoption for any type of new systems or a new innovations, you need also to be able to have the boundaries and also the framework around it. Because if you get some, some, some of the examples of, there was a lot of innovation that happens before, and unfortunately, because we didn't have the right regulation, it happens that it fails. So I think when the AI is something that we're venturing to do, I think the innovation with the regulation should be working hand to hand to manage that, because the safe AI is something that the whole world currently is talking about. 
And uh, I, I think the private and the government should be now working together and having some sort of committees or work groups to study the ethical use of AI. Due to the fact when you're doing the AI, you'll be having man, you know, problems when it comes to the biasness of the data. You will be having challenges when it comes to the security. Because you know, in the health sector, I'm talking about it, that we have the sensitivity and the confidentiality around the uh, patient data. And also, you will be having the imbalance that we have currently between the increasing number of AI projects and programs. And you know, uh, if you see that there is still workforce when it comes to the medical, that they still have a resistant in utilizing this type of AI application, given the fact that they might not see that the, the accuracy is high and they see that the intervention of a physician is must. So going forward, I think we need to look at these three areas, the regulation, the biasness of the data, we need to look at the security part, and the workforce readiness. Thank you. Uh, Dimitri Lavadas is, uh, is a very well-known uh, industry leader in the pharmacy business. He's uh, uh, with a very extensive uh, track record and a career in the sector. And I would like to ask him if he can share with us his thoughts about uh, ethical boundaries and considerations related to AI using in the industry. Also, how your organization and the industry you belong to is powering uh, personalized uh, patient care and uh, in the healthcare services. What can we expect from your end, from the industry you belong to in terms of uh, patient care and uh, personalized uh, treatments and services yeah. in the near future? Thank you, Marcelo. I think it's, it's a really key question and, and a great follow through on, on the answer from His Excellency. Um, ultimately, it's about protecting the patient. Um, and, and what is unique about where we find ourselves today is that different from any preceding technology, there is no steady state um, as the algorithms continue to, to learn, develop and change over time. And, and this is not unique to healthcare, by the way, this is across the board for all applications of AI in all industries. Uh, the answer today uh, and rightfully so, is to provide human oversight, um, which you can do because we have the resources and the competencies uh, to do so. The challenge is, as we look ahead, potentially, in as little as one generation, as the whole equation between effort rewards continues to shift, we might find ourselves in a position to no longer have those resources, have those competencies at scale, in order to be able to provide that oversight, let alone have the control on the system. And this is really where, as we look in healthcare specifically, where ultimately you deal with life and death, uh, as I said on the previous panel discussion as well, this is really critical for where we find ourselves today. And the, the real issue we have today with AI, as the benefits are so huge, in particular from an efficiency point of view, um, in healthcare, where it's critical to provide affordable healthcare to scale this quickly and do it in a cost efficient way, the, the, it's such, it's so tempting to really adopt the technology quicker than being able to put in place that regulatory and governance framework that we need to ensure that not for our generation, but for generations to come, that we have the right level of oversight and control. Thank you, Dimitri. And we had a chance in this panel to have, as I mentioned in the beginning, in the different perspectives, both from the public and the private sector, and also in a global perspective with this uh, Excellency Mubarak, uh, uh, Mubarak Ibrahim, but also the, one of the two major pillars in the sector, which is the pharmaceutical industry and also the healthcare providers, which has also the advantage of being connected also to R&D excellence centers and training centers. I'm uh, talking about Dr. Marwa Al-Kabi, which is the CEO of uh, the Sheikh Shahkud Medical City. And I would like to ask him to share with us his vision about uh, uh, what do you think that could be the crucial role in healthcare and how does uh, Sheikh Shekouk Medical City address the challenges related to data privacy and cybersecurity? And also, what is the potential that holds the AI on personalized uh, patient care 
through the service provider. How do service providers can integrate, can use AI to elevate and to announce patient care? Thank you for uh, having me today on this panel and uh, just picking up where one of my colleagues uh, has already uh, uh, mentioned before. At SSMC, we, we see the, actually the AI transforming the way we, provide, we practice medicine, the way we do business. It's not just something that's coming in the future. We already see the impact of uh, a positive impact of AI on uh, the, we do business and the practice. Uh, as we have a good number of uh, AI solutions already in practice, mainly in clinical practice, but we also have good number of them in the research and education and training that is uh, well utilized and has a, a really uh, good outcome out of them. Uh, we also have them in other uh, areas uh, such as finance and the operation that uh, really proven to be very useful there. Uh, so based on the outcome, really a positive outcome that comes out of uh, the, the, the solutions we have already implemented, I think the, based on the, your last question is the, uh, the, uh, the future is really AI and we need to embrace the AI and uh, be ready to, uh, to basically accept what comes with it uh, in terms of risk and manage how to manage risk and so on. Obviously, the risk of AI is not just uh, one very important point, is the data, uh, the, the wealth of data that we currently have, and there is a data breach uh, risk, but also being a technology and being on the cloud, uh, there is a risk of uh, algorithm uh, changes and manipulation and so on that has a really uh, uh, bad impact on the way uh, the practice of medicine and uh, people's lives. So this is why we take it very seriously. We take the uh, importance of uh, re addressing the, uh, the risks that comes with AI very seriously. And in my opinion, it's not uh, the end user's uh, responsibility only. Uh, we need to approach and tackle the risk that come with AI uh, comprehensively, starting with the regulators, uh, people or developers who develop the technologies, uh, cloud operators, and the end users. And to address them, I think we need to start with having the right policy, the right frameworks uh, that was mentioned here, uh, the right technologies uh, in terms of use to protect against that. Uh, but also we need to be uh, active in terms of monitoring, uh, auditing, and uh, being careful of w w what's, what's the latest, what's update, and so on. And we're lucky in, uh, as SMC, we're part of Pure Health, and Pure Health has been really uh, at the forefront of cybersecurity within the healthcare sector. We have an established center that currently deal with over one million attack on a daily basis. This is just to give you an idea of uh, how, uh, what are the risks that day. comes a day. One million a day. A day, exactly. So, uh, so imagine like how many of them, uh, and they keep getting more sophisticated by day. So we just need to be, to be, uh, to keep always uh, updating our system, be vigilant to what's happening around the world and be ready to attack because we have a valuable uh, asset that we need to protect. And the risk comes out if we don't actually deal with it uh, to patients' uh, care and patients' life. Uh, we also need to be uh, focused on educating uh, the, the users mainly, but also the, the, uh, the developers and so on, on those uh, important factors and how to make it uh, safer and mitigate most of the risks that come with it. Uh, so I'm glad to tell you that we, we are, uh, we're, at, we're addressing all those uh, risks and uh, mitigating them, working closely with the regulator, working closely with the developers, uh, our uh, PureCS, which is the IT arm within Pure Health, and uh, we'll continue to do so as uh, the technology keeps evolving and develops uh, further. Thank you so much, Dr. Marwa. We still have some time. So I'd like to go for a new round, uh, maybe a bit shorter than the previous one. But uh, it's, uh, Excellency, I would like to take you a bit, a bit out of your institutional role and to ask you also, based on your large experience, what do you think would be the, the, the impact in the traditional models uh, where healthcare is uh, currently relying on to provide services? What do you think AI will change in the roles of each one of us, the hospitals, the pharmaceutical, the, the, uh, the regulatory bodies, and the patients itself? What do you think would be the next five to 10 years impact and overall the landscaping of the healthcare sector? That's a very, very 
good question. <laughs> it requires to tackle it from different ways. Uh, in the coming five or ten years, before we think of the implementation of the AI, we need to think about the guidelines around it. And I have noticed, like worldwide, when I did my research, there is a, not a regulatory framework proper when it comes to the healthcare. So you, I can see that the WHO have done something, UNESCO have done, some of the country does. But I think in the coming five years to make the AI, as you stated, uh, uh, successful, whether we implement it for the patient or whether we implement it for the provider or whether we implement it at the level of the country itself, if we don't have the proper uh, guidelines and the safe use of AI, I think even if we think about it, it we, will, we will be implementing things, but it might not be as fast as we're expecting it because it will be having a, at the end the clash with the you know, with the regulation. But going forward, if the, everything is in place, if how, yes, it will affect. It will affect the patient because of, you know, we all looking that the patient will have access and they have quality for the care, and also they will be having uh, uh, access quality and the, the cost. So with the AI, there is a huge system that can be actually activated for the patient, like the telemedicine. You know, it's actually, this is one of the things that UAE has adopted and they're leading in it. You know, that type of uh, uh, AI uh, platforms, it helps that the, the, the patient can have accessibility very easy. The cost is within limits. And also in the same time, you will be able to see that the return of investment of how we can you know, provision these services to them from their comfort of their home. And this is one of our major you know, uh, United Arab Emirates um, you know, like, uh, objectives is that we reach our patients. This is one. Another thing when you talk about the providers, I think the providers, they need to work with that. It will make their life easy because they will be having an AI systems that can help them predict things before it manifests. You know, they have to think of the wellness because we'll be moving from diseases to wellness. And I see that the AI will be driving in that. So we'll be a, healthy, a healthier society and forward health. And this is also one of the strategic plans in the 2031, Lihua forward health. So we will be also being, you know, we will, we will manage that uh, with this approach, we can uh, manage the patients and the providers. And when it comes to the government itself, I think these type of initiatives, honestly, in the long run, it will guide us to have more of a proper decision making when it comes to the healthcare ecosystem provision of the care delivery at the level of the United Arab Emirates or at the level of the globe. You know, having these, uh, the proper guidelines set, having the proper security set, having the proper, um, uh, this one, um, workforce readiness set. The next thing I think we're gonna have um, an amazing world going forward with the AI. But just to thank you, I was, I was watching uh, a series just two days back uh, on Netflix where Bill Gates is saying, what is the next way forward when it comes to the AI? And it was really very interesting, so I really recommend that people see it. They were talking about certain facts of how the AI will change the human. And he said there are two sectors that he's seeing as Bill Gates that it would really, the, 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 the AI will take it to the next level is healthcare and education. And, but in the same time he said, and that was something that resonated with me, is that when we put the AI, you know, yes, it will do a lot of work. And we as a human will have more of a leisure time. So what are we gonna do with the leisure time? Is it gonna be more in the mental health stability that we're gonna be seeing? I'm not sure. But that was a question that was put there that we need to look, yes, implementing AI, but how we are also benefiting as human being out of it. Thank you, Vic. Thank you so much. And I need to say that uh, UAE government is uh, on the front, uh, front of the leading uh, approach as a government has to have, and you should be a role model for many other countries. I need to congratulate you doing a stunning job. We are finishing.
uh, Dimitri, so I need a quick question, a quick answer on this question. Uh, based on, uh, get a step out again of your institutional role, tell me, based on your large experience and uh, track record on the sector, what do you think is the next uh, trend? We all know that it's yeah. personalized care, but how that comes to effect, how that will impact our day-to-day -day basis, the patients and the healthcare providers' day-to-day uh, -day, uh, job? Look, and, and follow up on the previous question, which I think is the core question, right? Where is the practical application of AI within your organization, within, within your, 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 your sector? Um, at Saudi Chemical Pharma, we, we develop, manufacture, commercialize, and distribute medications. Um, today, we see upstream uh, the usage of AI to significantly accelerate the speed, reduce the cost of bringing new medications to market, um, which is critical to us, and we're a big consumer of that today as we're looking forward to launch more than 100 new assets over the years to come. So it's a real practical application that today is there, very, very much developing and maturing at speed. So. The second place we see uh, today more fragmented is within the, the care setting where basically the, the healthcare professional patient interaction where we more scale, more affordability, AI is being leveraged to, to enable that particular piece. But for us, the sweet spot where we believe that we, we, we are playing and can play a critical role is how do we use AI to truly bring the interaction between the, the pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare professional, how to bring it into the 21st century, and doing it in a way that's efficient, effective, and above all, compliant with the requirements of the regulator. And that's a sweet spot where essentially we're evolving from being historically a manufacturer and distributor of products to being a distributor of information. That's a critical and exciting place for us to operate in. Thank you so much, Dmitry. Uh, final question also for Dr. Manuel Kabi. As a CEO, I'm a CEO of an hospital too. So I would like to listen from you. How do you transform, how do you convert all this uh, potential, all these uh, open wide possibilities into improving, enhancing the business? Uh, because at the end of the day, we are uh, profitable companies. We, need to, we are private sector driven by, uh, by, yeah. by uh, profit yeah. aims. Yeah. So how do you transform all that in the factories in profitable business? How do you no, but that's use good thing. AI to make the most out of it in terms of a business maximum? Uh, in fact, AI make it easy, even easier uh, to, to do that. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, the approach is the same. It's basically understanding the capabilities of the solutions you're studying understanding your business, and then uh, building the right framework, building the right uh, protocols, policies, to govern the utilization of uh, such a solution in your organization. And then uh, again, I think uh, just the foundation of building the right foundation to uh, embrace the AI overall would help us uh, introduce more uh, of, uh, more, I mean, uh, wider use of AI in our organization. Thank you so much. We are finishing. I have the sign now that we should finish. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you and to be with you, sharing this stage with you. I hope it was helpful, useful for all of you. Just in fact, just thank you very much.